All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, The Residence Cove. My name is Fatai, and I have here again with me my friend, Mubarak Yusuf. Mubarak, how have you been? I've been great, Dr. Fatai. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well, man. Um, yeah, it's it's been, I, I think, how clinical work at the end of the day has its has its waves um outside of covid you have times when things are a bit chill and you have times when things are just you know crazy but at the end of the day everybody still tries to hang in there somehow you know obviously at the time that we're recording it seems like in some parts of the country there might be a, a wave another wave i don't even know what number at this time um of covid but Still, we're trying to hang in there, trying not to lose hope, trying to stay, stay, you know, keep the the agility. Because sometimes it can be numbing, it can be, it can be, you know, exhausting. You know, and I think a lot of people feel that way. So, anyways, I, I mean, I'm in South Carolina, do my thing. I work in South Carolina. It, it looks like things that you know, with COVID, picked up a little bit in the last one or two weeks. How about you on your end in New York, Mubarak? Uh, to be honest, uh, the last time I actually saw COVID patients was uh, in 10 years. It was, uh, I think, March, April. Uh, no way. Yeah, but now there's actually like uh, more COVID patients coming in. So like I had a shift whereby I admitted like three COVID patients in one shift. So it was like, wow, COVID uh, still exists. <laughs> it does exist, man. The way that it's looking is it's looking like something that probably won't necessarily go away. We, we might have to adjust our lives to that new reality. I'm not trying to be grim or anything, but if, if we go back, go down memory lane, you think about how influenza came to be something that everybody kind of adjusted to. It started sort of like this, like a global pandemic and, you know, with the advent of vaccines and, you know, just being able to manage things properly, it became, you know, something that we could deal with. I'm hoping COVID is probably not as long lasting as that, but I think, the, the, the way forward is going to be a version of readjusting to the new norm and then just, you know, carrying on with our lives uh, accordingly. And obviously people should go and get vaccinated. That would help accelerate that recovery, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, we got to hope for the best. Um, so uh, Mubarak, again, you, you have questions. I come with my perspectives on these questions. Um, so you go ahead and ask, you know, whichever question is on your mind at this time and then we'll go from there i, I know uh, the questions obviously but um I, I like you to ask them so people watching can you know get a sense of them so two questions in one all right uh, majority of people obviously are flying uh medical students and we also have people yeah. that are not medical students so yeah. what uh advice do you have for people applying for residency okay right well i, I yeah, yeah. Is, is that what advice do I have for them and what else? And uh, what advice do you have for medical students that are doing their rotation? Like, okay. how do so, so, so I, I can put both of those things into one uh, because obviously, majority of people that are applying are still medical students and you know, they 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 obviously trying to get into residency. But as IMGs, we know that there are certain the people who might have finished the medical school you know, maybe one or two years, you know, before, and are still in the process of trying to get into residency. Um, yeah, so it would apply for both people. So first, applying for residency, I think this video is coming out at a time where it is perhaps, you know, you can say it is timely in a way, um, but even if it wasn't a time where people are actively applying for residency, the general idea still stands. Um, there's certain things that, you know, Sometimes it's hard to be frank about, but regardless, one has to be frank about it. It doesn't mean you can do much about it, but if you're in a situation at this time where you could do something about it, that per perhaps would be your most important focus. And that is, again, your scores. That's going to be the biggest determinant of a lot of things. I'm not saying people who probably don't have as, you know, fancy scores or some others won't get in. People get in somehow, somewhere, you know, but if you're in that position where you haven't written your exams, that is the number one priority. Now let's put that aside. You've written your exams, you go in your scores, you probably finished medical school, you're rounding up, um, you're applying to, you're trying to apply uh, at this time. What are the things that are important? 
number one thing that I find very important is being clear about where you want to apply. Now you can apply as wide as possible, but please, for God's sake, try to read the criteria for many of the places that you're applying. Obviously, know what your profile is. You know, for many of us who, you know, are not Americans or don't have any permanent residency here, we have to apply to places that sponsor visas. And that's where you have to, you know, that's a big criteria for some of some people like us. Some people who are Americans, it's a different conversation for them. But if you're in that position, you want to make sure you're applying to places where they can sponsor a visa for you. Um, the second thing is um, you want to make sure that you have all of your papers ready and on time, you know, ready to go by the time the application season opens. The applications, meaning you can start to submit your application. I think it's probably in a couple of days from now from uh, uh, what I know. Um, so you want to make sure that you're submitting early. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that things are going to be reviewed based on the number, the, the way the applications come in. It most likely is going to be in an alphabetical order. But what happens is many residency programs have limited interview spots. And if you're not putting your stuff early and the program is reviewing their stuff early, where they can start to allocate some interview. Uh, slots if they're pulling people who qualify some programs will have criteria based on scores some people uh, places will have criteria based on visa requirement some places will have criteria based on you know whether we research or whatever ecfmg certification for imgs again um mm -hmm. once they've pulled those people and they start to allocate uh, uh, interviews somebody might come along maybe later down the month or maybe in october most programs probably won't start to uh, look up uh, things you know till maybe end of September, October. But once they pull those initial batch and fill up all the interview spots, somebody come rolling along in mid-October with good scores, good profile, may not necessarily get an interview spot because they've just given all their interview spots to all of the people who initially meet their criteria. So you wanna really think about that, get your stuff ready on time um, so you can apply uh, early. And what are the things that you, th thinking about to get ready, obviously your errors application, which will include your letters of recommendations, uh, you know, personal statement, your CV, you know, your transcript, Dean's letter and all of those things. You want to get those things ready ahead of time. Make sure you're talking to your school. It's probably a bit, you know, too close at this time, but if, if you're still kind of slacking and not pushing hard on those things you want to make sure you're doing that in this particular in this particular uh era um we know now that ecfm certification is a different process so whatever you need for the ecfm certification you must have done ahead of time whether it's the oet exams that they were asking for or whatever other ways the mini cex uh, uh evaluations you want to make sure all of those things. so my, my, the bottom line is start early start early start early and once if you're early into the preparation you know your chances of getting ready on time and being able to just adjust and prepare or hopefully for interviews you, you have a better chance of, of doing well in process in, in, in general um and you know one thing i always say and this is something that is very important also that yes your interviews slots are going to be from merit you know you have to merit them from whether your scores or your profile or whatever but you also want to take advantage of people that you know that are in residency because in my in my from what i know um there is a chance that people who are actively in a residency program might be able to put a word for you and it's not something that you require of everybody but it's worth asking from people that you're close to and saying, you know what, you, you can you put a word for me? If it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. If there are people who probably, if it's a program where that doesn't necessarily work out that way, that's fine. But at least you ask, there's nothing to lose. So you want to take advantage of that as well. Not that, you know, if somebody doesn't do that necessarily, they're the worst person on earth and they don't, it might be a lot of circumstances that you don't see, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt asking um about that um, um also um and really outside of that i'm not sure there's not there's anything crazy to add just you know keep keep your head up you know hope for the best 
and you know just reach out don't stop you know and, and people oh this is another very important thing do not feel free i mean feel free to reach out to any program coordinator any program administrator via email or via phone call you may be surprised what you may you get out of that so for example a program administrator might feel like somebody somebody canceled an interview slot and you happen to catch that person on the day where they're trying to figure out who to allocate that new interview slot for and you might just be the one where they give that because you call them or you email them. And, you know, so, so that's another important thing to do. And once the match is over, the supplemental uh, um, uh, uh, programs also is, some, is a very important time to start to reach out to programs. But again, I'm hoping everybody gets through, uh, through the match. And for those who don't, you keep your head up, you do your best, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to people you know who are in residency, reach out to program administrators, don't, you have nothing, zero to lose from reaching out, zero to lose and potentially a lot of things again. So that's really my, my thought about, about, you know, people applying this year. Thank you very and, much. And for, obviously for, for subsequent years as well. I think that's pretty much comprehensive, you know. Yeah. Uh, reach out and apply early. So. Apply early and reach out, I think. If, and obviously, if you haven't written exams yet, and for people who will be applying in the future, your exams are the most important. Because those are the things you can control. And that's why I always reminded myself while I was a medical student. There was a lot of things I couldn't control. I couldn't control program directors that like me or like my personality or like the way that I look or talk or whatever. But I could really, to the best of my ability, I could control what I did on the exam and how I prepared for the exam. And then hope for the best in terms of results. So that, that part is a big, big, massive, massive part, I always like to say. All right. So that, that's the first question. Um, again, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next section. All right. Thank you.